Hello and welcome to episode 13 of All the Stitches. This is a show about quilting, knitting, cross-stitch, needlework, and whatever other craftiness I'm up to. My name is Colleen and I'm coming to you from the Lakes region of New Hampshire in the United States. In today's show I'm going to be talking about some quilting, knitting, counter cross-stitch, and wool applique, as well as my Something Old segment. And I'm also going to be talking about a project I've embarked on organizing my needlework patterns. So I have a lot to cover so I'll get right to it. Welcome to December. It's uh, December 2nd on this day that I'm filming this video and so I've moved on from my November finishes and moved on to my December crafting. This one behind me is what I'm calling winter trees. I'll move that up for a moment. And what this is, is a pattern by Edja Sitar of Laundry Basket Quilts. And you can see it there as a very traditional type, you know, maybe somewhat modern, but a traditional piece tree. I love this pattern. And I had the templates from her website to make these trees. And I always find this shape can be challenging because you know there's a re right side and a wrong side, a reverse side to this. And so I thought it was really helpful to have this. So I had this pattern. I wanted to make this quilt as she shows it, but I also had this line of fabric and it is a Robert Kaufman Artesian Batiks and they were fat quarters. And I thought it was such a beautiful line. I ended up getting the, the fat quarter set. This is what I did with it. I kept looking at this twinkly fabric. It does have a lot of little gold and a lot of silver in it. And it's sort of a batiki background. And I thought, I kept thinking that would be so nice for that tree pattern. Now, mind you, I had a totally different plan going in. I really wanted to do it very much like she did. Um, and, and do but do greens and reds for sort of a holiday Christmas type quilt that I could leave up all through the winter. And you know what? I'm still going to do it because I love this pattern. I loved working with these templates made it so easy. I machine pieced it and I machine quilted it. It's a good size. I'm not a big fan of machine quilting on a my little domestic machine but for this size I was able to to handle it okay but I'm so pleased with this little twinkly tree behind me I'm going to bring you back down so for my next finish is this these are the three prairie schooler Santas counted cross stitch that I've been working on and I know I've shown you as I've gone along here is my finished quilting Santa. Here is the knitting Santa. I know you've seen that before. And here is the sewing Santa. And I did what I often love to do with kind of cross stitch is I combined it into a little quilt banner. And I just used this Christmassy fabric that I had and it was such a such a perfect color match and um, I'm so thrilled with this so they're my crafting Santas that are all together in one piece I was going to do a horizontal wall hanging and then realized you know there's only so many places to hang things I think a more narrow banner is the way to go so I'm really pleased that I did it but you haven't gotten a good look at my quilting Santa yet all finished and there he is I, I did mess up a little on the chart his face isn't quite the same as the pattern but I worked it out and it you know it doesn't make any difference in the end not to me anyway here's the fabric I used on the back and isn't it pretty I thought it was a pretty um, quilty type fabric so that is my crafty Santas Now I've moved on to my works in progress. I hoped I was going to have this done, but then I decided just go ahead and do the video and finish it later. So I have finished all of the sheep from my wall hanging. 
open it up, it's, but you're not going to see it all. I'll insert a photo of this as is. What I'm going to do with this is, because there, there are these little bits of black for the black sheep and the black feet and heads, I'm going to border it in a narrow, a one inch black print border. And then outside of that, I have a plaid stripey kind of medium gray. And then I'll do the outside border. Their little eyes, it was a big decision whether or not I put eyes on these sheep. I couldn't decide how to do them. So I did end up doing as the pattern suggested and I just did French knots for the eyes. So I have grand plans to work, continue to work with this quilt once I get it bordered in the next couple of days. I'm going to hand quilt it and I haven't, as I've mentioned, I haven't done a lot of hand quilting in the last several years because I just don't feel like I can do it as well as I used to with those tiny stitches. But I thought some big stitch quilting would be nice. Well, naturally my big, my quilting is just naturally big stitching at this point, but I thought I'd kind of emphasize that and do some straight lines um, kind of intersecting these squares. But I'm really looking forward to the, the quilting on these sheep and then I can hang it behind me after the winter season. So here's another work in progress and I'm more than half done because I finished a sock. I finished one of my Charlie socks. It's a pattern from Knit Picks by I believe the designer is Bethany Richards and it's using Knit Picks Stroll yarn and I changed the pattern in that it the pattern was a toe up sock but I did it as a cuff down sock so I had to reverse the instructions. I also used a different heel than they used. I just used a slip stitch heel and but what I think I really love most about this pattern is this section on uh, under the toe that is this checkerboard. I love that. I think I'd love to do that on another pair of socks. And of course the little trees along the top. And I made a mistake on the pattern, but you know, honestly, I don't care. I'll do the second one better. And <laughs> the second one is really not far behind. I've I've gotten I've gotten it done right up until the toe. So now I can start the design on the toe. Pretty much, I think maybe I have a little more to, to knit straight and then I can start that. So I've been really trying to get these done because I think they're kind of a Christmassy sock. And then I can move along because I only work on one pair of socks at a time. It's just a rule I have for myself because otherwise you just, you never get them done. So now I'm moving on to my starts. You won't be terribly impressed because my starts aren't really started yet, but I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to pounce. Come to think of it, I do have another finish and it's this little project bag that I made for myself. Isn't it pretty fabric? I wanted a little Christmas project bag for Christmas knitting. What I have in here is the Advent Stripe yarn from the Cozy Knitter. Get a good look. I, I feel lucky to have this because these come and go really quickly. I just want to show you the label. There's the Cozy Knitter. And this is the 2020 Advent Stripe. So for those unfamiliar, they tell you where to break the yarn for the next ball. So this is, this is one sock, this is the other sock. And so that the stripes will match, you just have to remember to start on the same end and they tell you where to start. So it, they're Advent stripes because you, you knit a stripe every day during the Advent season. So like I said, this is December 2nd. Well, <laughs> I'm already behind. <laughs> So I'll knit a stripe of color, um, probably 
in another day or so, I'll knit all of the stripes that I've, I'm behind on because I am trying to finish the Charlie socks and then I can move on to the Advent stripe. I'll, I'll catch up on all the stripes that I've missed for those few days. And then I'll sit down every day and just knit another color stripe right through to December 25th. And then maybe I'll have a pair of Christmas socks, who knows? But I'll try, I'll try to keep that up. But I thought that was fun and I really, I'm very pleased. They're really beautiful colors and I'm happy to have this. So my other start is in my project bag that I made. I, I talked about, uh, I think last time, from a block that was given to me. And in here is this pattern. Oops, bad light on it. Let me take it out of the plastic. That's a better look. I love it. I thought that was so cute. So I'm going to start that. And this is kind of exciting to me because I haven't worked with linen before. So this is going to be interesting, but isn't it a pretty blue? You probably can't see the true color, but it is a pretty blue. I think it is, what is the count? It is 28 count blue spruce cashel. So I feel like, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I might need a magnifier, but I don't think it's a very difficult pattern for my first linen because really if you put a snowflake in the wrong place, I think you can get around that. So <laughs> I'll do first, I'll do the Santa and the sleigh and work across with that and then kind of work down and, um, and just fill it in. I think it'll be, I think I'll be able to do fine as long as I can see it. That's might be kind of an issue, but I think the magnifier will help. I put together the threads. They're the called for colors on the pattern with a couple of exceptions that I, I couldn't get. Like I had to buy this DMC, but they're pretty. They're um, the Gentle Art Company threads. I think they're very pretty. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm trying to get that Charlie sock done so that I can move on with my, a lot of my handwork. And I think this will be a fun project to work on during the month of December leading up to Christmas. Projects. Well, I think that's all my projects, but I have one more thing that I'm working on and then I'm going to show you something old. Here is my something old and it is old. It is from 1976 or thereabouts. That's when the pattern was produced by Paragon Corporation. But I worked on it probably very close to then. Um, probably, you know, somewhere between 1976 and 1979, probably earlier. Um, I just love this little winter village. I'll bring it close. And it reminds me, I've mentioned many times my favorite group of novels um, by Louise Penny. And it's this fictional town of Three Pines in Quebec. And it, this reminds me so much of the way she describes that town. So that this really kind of touches my heart. But um, just to tell you a little bit about this, it is cruel embroidery. I used to do a lot of cruel embroidery in, in high school and, and, and beyond. I gave a lot of gifts of these things. But the funny thing is, this, I believe, is the only surviving piece of my cruel work. Now, other people may ha still have it, who knows. They were kind of out of style. I've noticed some cruel work coming back, and I was really happy with that. Now, when I moved up here a couple of years ago, my husband and I, I pulled out all this old stuff that I had had packaged up and put in an attic. 
and I remembered how much I loved this and how hard I worked. And this was a lot of work, a lot of stitching. And I thought, oh, it's so dingy and everything, but I wonder if I can save it. So I kept it. I cleaned up the frame. It's still, the frame has a few nicks and things, but that's okay. And what I did was it was very yellowed. So I took it apart. Um, I put it in that restoration cleaner for needlework. I have told, I've talked about it before and it really works well, but it, it is very stinky. You, you put the piece in, you know, take it off the backing board, put it, the piece in and let it soak for 15 minutes. And then you take it out and rinse it and then put it back in for like eight hours. Well, it does a great job and it brings, I was afraid it would make the colors run, but it doesn't. It brings the the colors back out on the fiber, whatever fiber, wool or whatever. I think this is wool. Um, and it, it just takes, in this case, I'd say most of the stain on the background and most of the yellowing, it brought back the whiteness. It, it's a little tiny bit yellow, particularly around the frames, but I've learned these frames, you know, kind of leach into the pieces. And, um, but for the most part, when I stick it back into the cleaned out frame, I think that it, it covers up those parts that, um, that turned a little brown. But anyway, that is my winter scene. And I feel like it's all spruced up. It's back in the frame and I'm going to hang it this winter. And the fun thing is Paragon came out with the spring version and I made that as well. And that's also very dingy, so I have to clean that one up. And then that frame didn't survive the storage. So um, I think what I'll do, see, I'm not, it's not, um, it's just popped in here without being connected. But I think what I'll do is I'll just trade them out. So in the winter, I'll, I'll hang this. In the spring and summer, I'll hang the spring version within the same frame. But I thought you'd like that. And, uh, and I do too, my little fictional town of Three Pines. The last thing I wanted to talk to you today is about my organization project for my needlework and kind of cross-stitch patterns. You know, I did that thing where I was going through my patterns and I came across a pattern that I had two of. So I had bought it a second time by accident. And luckily it was just a little, you know, inexpensive pattern. But I thought, well, you know, I have to get a better grip on this. So I looked online about how people are organizing and doing inventories and so forth. And I came across on Etsy, somebody has these cross-stitch journal pages and they're PDFs that you can purchase for $8.99 and there are several pages involved and you can just print them out and fill them in. So I thought that was a great idea. This one came from the name of the company on Etsy is Black Crow Digital on Etsy. And there it's called the Cross Stitch Journal Pages. This is the first page of my stitching journal. And you know, you can print it and then you can make copies of all the pages that you want. Um, this is the one I was mostly interested in. It is the pattern and kit inventory. And I started to fill it out. I made several copies and started to fill it out. So it's, uh, it's, um, it includes name of pattern, the designer manufacturer, the purchased from, date, and price. So I started to fill it out and then thought, yeah, I'm not sure how much that helps me for what I'm doing, but there were several other pages on this PDF download that I thought were really great and useful. One was a thread inventory. I have it in plastic, so it's a thread inventory. I think that could be really helpful. Then there was a work in progress. And like my sock knitting, I tend to work on one needlework project at a time. Although I say that, but I have so many whips that are just sitting unattended to, but 
I, I'll put it this way. I tend to focus on one needlework project at a time. Uh, work in progress photos, which again, um, maybe I should do that for some of my poor neglected projects. Stitching supply shopping list. I mean, that would be good if you have some patterns and you need some fabrics and floss and, and things so you could fill that out. I must have liked it because I made a couple of copies. A stitching wish list. I guess that's for all of your unicorn projects that you're you're dying to collect. She has some floss wraps. Is that what they're called? Um, you can print these out on heavier paper and wrap your floss around them. <laughs> now here's here's a funny one. This is a time log for your projects. And just so you know, this is something I would never do. Never. You know why? I worked as a paralegal for, I don't know, 38 years or something. And I had to clock my time for every 10 minute interval. I had to keep track of my time. I will never do that ever for anything else in my life. When I retired, that was it as far as time logs are concerned. But I can see, and particularly, you know, maybe if someone is making projects for sale, they might want to know what, what kind of time goes into it. Don't people always ask crafters, how long did it take you to do that? I have no idea. I just do it when I feel like it and when I enjoy it. But that's the time log. If you, if you like that kind of thing, you're all set. And it, it also comes with my stitching friends directory, names and addresses. Now, I keep mine on my phone, but whatever. But I do think that I liked the, um, I liked the idea of it. And it was really a jumping off point to what I decided to do in the end. So I had this pretty binder from Vera Bradley. It's a Vera Bradley design. And what I did was I decided was useful to me is I changed the front page a little bit. I printed out the words needlework pattern and I inserted it into her cover page. So I made it my needlework pattern inventory. Decided I really wanted this to be more of an inventory so I could look all in, I could look at one place to see what I had. My patterns and kits are sort of in different places in the room just because that's where they fit. But um, I really thought this book would be useful to, to see it all in one place. I think I'll just open up my the book. What's right in front but my <laughs> my Santa that I'm starting. So what I did was for every pattern or kit that I had, I made a, a photocopy and it doesn't have to be color. You know, I had some color ink in my printer, so that's what I used for the most part. And I just made a copy of the pattern picture and I decided the most important thing for this booklet was the pattern, picture, and the threads that are used. So I have it right there. I can refer to that if I'm buying some threads or to see what I have in my collection. And for each pattern, I put, I've printed a label. And on the label I have I thought again that what are the most important things for me to to look at so I've titled it kit you know whether or not it's a kit or if I've kitted it up and it says kit and then I check off either partial or complete so it would be a, do I have the complete kit or or is it partially completed um, or was it purchased as a complete kit and then I check that off yes or no um, and then I check off yes or no whether the fabric is purchased. See, this is what it. This is what I did. Now, to someone else, it might be there might be more important information that you're interested in, but I just thought I'd show you what I did. Here's the next one, reindeer roundup. That's another one that I would love to to make. So then, what I decided was to separate it into sections. First section is all Christmas because I have a fair amount of Christmas projects. And then 
I did winter. I've ordered some tabs, uh, three ring binder tabs, so that I can separate all these. This was, I tore out from a magazine and it was just a one page pattern. So all I did was keep, I'm keeping the pattern in here. So there'll be some one page patterns, but for the most part, it's just um, a good inventory. So then let's see, from winter, then I move on to autumn. So I have all my autumn patterns. I know you know the season, so I won't go through each one. I don't have a lot of uh, spring or summer. I might have one or two. This is all four seasons, so I'll have a section for those. I have a section of samplers. So here's one sampler I have, and this is a kit. So I've checked off, purchased complete. I've checked that off, purchased as a kit. You know, I think that'll help me just look for, th you know, find things. I will know where things are based on whether or not it's a whole kit or just a single pattern. Any completed projects that I've done, I just made a photocopy of the pattern in black and white so as not to use all my printer ink. At the top, I have another label that says completed and the date. I thought I'd like to keep all my patterns together even in here, even if it's something I've finished. Because, you know, somebody might want to borrow and I might want to give away or whatever, but, or I might decide that I wanted to make some, somebody something as a gift. And then, so I see my whole collection all in one place. So, oh, I have another section of sheep. Do you believe it? I needed a whole section of sheep because I have a lot of sheep patterns. <laughs> or this section is going to be words. So I have a lot of, or have a few patterns that are just words. And they kind of go together in a, in a group. Then I have, my last section is embroidery. Because I found that I have a few of those hanging around too that I haven't done yet. I had this cruel kit of this rabbit. I probably got it after that winter scene I just showed you. And then I sort of stopped doing any cruel work, but it's awfully cute. I saved it through the years and I would like to, to make that cruel rabbit embroidery patterns. Um, this one from Crabapple Hill, this one from Kathy Schmitz. So these are all things that I'm keeping all in this binder. In case I ever were, were to get bored and couldn't figure out what to do, that's probably never going to happen. But I enjoy doing things like this. It's, um, you know, it helps overall. It organizes you. It organizes your mind so you don't have all these things out there that feel overwhelming. So putting it together is fun. I, and I love office supplies. <laughs> I just always have. I used to go to Staples and just wander around and look at everything. I also meant to mention that I'm wearing today, for you knitters out there, I'm wearing my Soldatna crop. It's not so cropped. I made it a little longer. It's made with magpie fibers, um, swanky DK yarn that I love, as I've said, is my favorite yarn. What else can I say about it? I talked more about this sweater in my episode three, which was the knitting, I can't remember the name of it, but it was the knitting um, episode. So for upcoming December episodes, I'm planning to do, to do this. Um, for right now, I'm thinking of two Christmas episodes, well really, a, a Christmas episode but in two parts and because I have a lot of Christmas crafts and I'd say it's mainly quilting but there will be other things that sneak in there but I've made a lot of Christmas quilts through the years and I'd love to walk you through some of those I have small ones I have large ones and I think it will be I'll try to make it festive and fun for everyone I hope you'll come back and join me if you like this video, please hit like, please subscribe for any future videos. You don't want to miss those Christmas episodes. And until next time, I hope all of your stitches bring joy. Mm -hmm.